Good morning. It is Thursday, the 8th of September. We continue the story of uh, Paul and Barnabas in Acts 15. And we remember the learning that we picked up yesterday as we had fo been following in the book of Job, how um, those of us who are Christians, in a sense, I suppose all people, but especially for us as Christians, um, we will face persecution and trouble, um, especially for our faith. And we will often wonder what we have done to deserve such persecution and trouble. And we, as we learned in Job, for many people, we face the trouble and persecution because maybe we have secret sin. Um, but for Paul and Barnabas, we heard how they had traveled around a large area and had been constantly sniped at by a group of men who had followed them and were stirring up the crowd against them. In that initial part of the story, those men are not identified except that they would be either uh, non-believers or perhaps they were believers. And we'll pick up on to that now. So Acts 15 verses 1 to 11. Paul and Barnabas have arrived back with a grouping of the apostles and elders and they have given a report of all that has happened and there is great excitement, um, excitement that the Gentiles are coming to faith. And then we are told that a group of men arrive and, we, and now they are identified, they are identified as the Judaizers, they are former Pharisees who have become believers, but their belief is that you cannot become um, a Christian or a follower of the way um, unless you've effectively first become a Jew, so you are circumcised, you have to follow all the laws of Moses, and then you, um, as it were, add on to that your uh, Christianity. So in a sense, they were teaching that one can't be a Christian unless you were also simultaneously a Jew. And um, this causes quite a lot of dissension. And so they are all sent off to Jerusalem where they were to, to have a meeting, a, a council of Jerusalem, where this matter would be decided. Now what's interesting, and it is somewhat conjecture, but it is interesting that if Paul has been tracked by a group of men, um, and then suddenly a group of men arrive where Paul is giving his report, and they are now identified as Judaizers, and people who want you to be a Christian, but a, a Jew first, could these be the same men? We not that It's not expressly denied, but neither is it expressly said that these were they. So it does raise an interesting point. And, it, and from my own experience, I think there is valid um, probability that this could be the case. But also know that so often the persecution that I face in the church, and I, I think many others would be able to um, agree with this, so much of the persecution we face in the church comes not from the non-believers, it comes from fellow believers. They have a different opinion. There's only one way to worship God and that's their way, and if you're different, then somehow you're wrong and they are right. They are very legalistic, just as these Judaizers were. They were former Pharisees, as I said, and they were strict followers of the law, just as the Pharisees had been in Jesus' time. And Jesus could heal someone, but they were not interested in the, the, the healing and the grace that had been um, shown to the, the sick person or the cripple. They were more worried that it was being done on the Sabbath. So Paul and Barnabas go down to Jerusalem and there the assembly meets, was it the whole church and then a little side meeting with the elders, was it only the elders? Again, we're not too sure, but similar, I suppose, to what in the modern day we might call our, our assemblies or our synods where the decision-making body gather. And uh, Peter stands up, and we'll pick more of this up later, Peter stands up and gives a remarkably mature speech. And you think back to when uh, Peter was first called as a disciple and a man who perhaps doubted himself to many extents, he, had something, I think, of a, of a temper. He was certainly rash and bold and sometimes got himself into quite a lot of trouble. I mean, how he stands up with perhaps one of the most profound arguments supporting Paul, arguing against 
the uh, Pharisees who had become Christians, the Judaizers, and saying, if God has accepted them, the Gentiles, and accepted them before they were circumcised, then let us not hold circumcision against them. But we'll pick up more of that uh, tomorrow. But just to remember that so much our persecution so often comes from fellow believers. Be strong and firm in your faith. Know what you believe. Be polite and gracious. You see Paul and Barnabas doing that at all times. Don't stoop to the level of those other believers, God forbid, who um, do such dastardly deeds in, in order to make everyone just like them. They are legalistic and pharisaical in their approach. So folks, be aware of that. Have a wonderful day. We'll chat again tomorrow. God bless.